Yo guys, what is going on? And thank you for checking out the video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Connor, and today we're going to talk about the Warp 9 Supermoto wheels on a CRF250L. And the main question is, are they worth it? Let's get into it. Alright guys, so there's going to be three main things that I'm going to talk about today about these wheels just to keep it simple. It's going to be cost, performance, and aesthetics. Alright, so point number one, cost. So I will lie to you guys, these things are by no means cheap. I ordered these off of Moto X Industries and they cost me exactly $1,058. Now, I did actually find a discount code from a Facebook group that I was a part of. It's called Sumo Stunners. Basically, if you use the coupon code Facebook, it saves you some money. So I got $55 off the order and it came out to $1,058, so save some money. I personally think these wheels are pretty damn expensive. You're gonna spend $1,000 and that's you know pretty much a fraction of the bike. If you've got a cheaper bike like a CRF250L, this is like 25% of what my bike is actually worth. So uh, it's kind of a hard purchase and that guy's an asshole. Price is obviously a lot. Now, when I first bought my CRF250L, I actually bought it under the purview that I was going to add the Supermoto wheels. I almost thought I was gonna add them like pretty much instantly, but then the $1,000 price tag obviously scared me, and basically it ended up taking me a whole year to purchase these. I feel like on YouTube, a lot of people just spend a ton of money and act like it's no big deal. Thousand bucks is a lot of money. I gotta say, I'm so happy I finally have them now, but it is a big monetary commitment to put these on the bike. Now, with that being said, when it comes to buying items in the motorcycle industry, you're already gonna be paying a premium because in the US at least, these things are viewed as toys. They're not necessarily a necessity, so you're gonna get charged a lot more to buy items for it. Now, I always revert back to the old saying, buy once, cry once. So if you wanna buy a premium item, you're gonna buy it once and then you're never gonna worry about it again. You'll cry once because it costs a lot, but after you bought it, it's yours, it's good to go, it's not gonna break on you, there's not gonna be reliability issues. So I really had to apply that general state of mind to these wheels, because you buy them once, they're a thousand bucks, it's a lot of money, but then once you bought them, they're good to go. You don't need to worry about them breaking down. I know there's some cheaper supermoto wheel options, some people do conversions from like the CBR, but buy once, cry once, and it's absolutely worth it once you have the premium items on your bike already. These wheels do have a ton of options to customize them if you really wanna do so. So you could customize the spokes, the nipples, the hub color, Color, the rim color now that's all gonna come at an extra price basically all I did is I went with black wheels black hubs everything else is silver because it cost me no extra money but you can customize to your little hearts desire if you want some cool neon colored wheels or some shit like that but I just went with the bare minimum that way oh cars are stopped that way it's a lot cheaper at the end of the day these wheels have really good resale value you can buy these wheels for thousand dollars eleven hundred bucks and come a year or two down the road let's say maybe you want to sell your bike you want to sell the wheels separately you could sell these things for nearly like a couple hundred dollars under the actual purchase price so performance as you can imagine these things handle freaking amazingly the feeling that you get locked in is incredible it's really hard to even imagine taking these wheels off once you've got them now the wheels themselves are both 17s so what you do is you take your rear tire which is traditionally an 18 with the rear dirt wheel and the front tire which is a 21 with the front dirt wheel and you convert them both to 17. what that does for one is immediately it actually lowers the seat height of the bike so if you're a shorter guy shorter gal and you're hoping to lower the seat height get more comfortable on the bike then this is a great option to do so because it's going to lower the seat height by one and a half to two inches which can be good for people Damn, it looks like it's basically just turned into a night vlog. All good though, we'll still shred it. Please disregard my notes here, you can ignore them. The Supermoto wheels also change the geometry of the bike, meaning it's gonna sit a little bit further forward, a little more aggressive, because the front wheel is now smaller. So you feel that immediately. The uh, agility of the bike is super noticeable, it feels awesome. Totally coming into the darkness here. I feel like when I was doing research on Supermoto wheels, no one ever gave like a really good comparison for how dirt 
versus Supermoto feels like. And I think the easy analogy is if you've ever driven a Jeep or a lifted truck or something with very knobby wheels, you'll know that the ride characteristics are decently uncomfortable. So it's pretty loud. The tires tend to grab a lot of the road. So it kind of has you going all over the place. And uh, it's generally like, you know, not the most pleasant ride in the world on pavement that is. Now, if you had a Mercedes with racing slicks on, you can imagine how smooth it feels on the highway, cornering everything. You're just locked in, you feel planted, almost like you're planted directly to the ground. And that's the difference I would say that these Supermoto wheels make specifically. Sorry guys, I just saw these stairs and thought, what is more Supermoto? <laughs> Let's do it. Woo. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me guys. Uh. Anyways guys, so these wheels just feel a hell of a lot more planted, especially on the highway. I can ride up to speed, up to 80, no issues. I don't worry about getting blown around. The dirt knobby wheels would really move you around a lot with the wind. These are totally planted and I absolutely love them. As for the actual cornering and turning experience of these wheels, I'm not the best rider, like, so I can't say for sure. Honestly, most of the time I spend on this bike, I'm just ripping wheelies. So I can't speak to that, but they do feel awesome. I am looking to significantly improve a lot of my supermoto skills. Maybe there's a, a little go-kart track day in the future, who knows? On the topic of wheelies, this video has really been lacking here, so my bad. I'll make it right, I'll make it right. Whoa! Oh wait, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Get over here real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. Last but not least for this review are going to be the aesthetics of the bike. So I gotta pull over to, to get you a real good look at her. So guys, the aesthetic, do you mind, bro? As you can tell, the aesthetics of the bike are freaking awesome. Again, we've got the black rims, black hubs, silver nipples, silver spokes, but it just looks so, so much better at this point. You can tell the geometry is a little bit, a little bit higher up in the rear, so it's a more aggressive riding feeling, but I mean, the looks speak for themselves. One thing you do have to get is the Supermoto Fender. If you order from Moto X Industries, that's an extra 25 bucks. You do have to drill holes in the bottom so it can fit. Uh, you kind of just line it up. That was a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, but but uh, it looks awesome with that Supermoto fender and then the black wheels. I obviously upgraded the black plastics from uh, the CRF 250M, got them from Bikers Bits, link below. But yeah, all in all, it's awesome. And holy shit, I need to tighten my chain. <laughs> Goddamn. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace.